Welcome to Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Meg Heaton. In Another Life, I was a reporter for the Hudson Star Observer for 27 years. And in that capacity, I spent most of it covering the Hudson School District and the people who provided education to our students, did a lot of student interviews and some parent interviews as well over the years. It's my privilege today to have some parents and teachers and educators, all educators now, <laughs> everybody is one now, uh, with me today to talk about the impact of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic on their family lives and their professional lives and, their, and most importantly, what it's doing for our students. I think it's a little difficult for people to imagine what strictly online learning would be like, particularly for really young kids. And um, so our guests, my guests today are David Moss. He's a, uh, a um, media specialist with Rock Elementary. Julie Warren, who is with Rock as well. Adam Wirt, who is with um, Rock School. And the parents, Kim and Matthew, are representing parents. You have to speak for all parents today, you guys. <laughs> So if we could start out, I think just kind of a general question and jump in and talk as, as, you, as you like. What are the biggest challenges this thing has presented? Julie, you want to start? Sure. I am a first grade teacher at EP Rack, and so I work with pretty young children, usually around six and seven years old. Um, doing all of, you know, so much of what I do is relationship based. So when you have to do it via computer um, instead of, or cell phones, instead of in person, that is, you know, creates a huge challenge. Just that connection that you have with kids and the relationship. Um, but we've done pretty well. I mean, we've, um, we use technology. And so um, outside of just missing my kids and the connection, I, I think that the next biggest challenge is technology. I live north of Somerset and, um, our internet is not the greatest. And so, you know, we've had, we've had some challenges, but um, we've been working through those. Okay. Adam, how about you? Uh, I guess I would say some of the biggest challenges have been trying to coordinate things with parents and students and, uh, you know, scheduling with my own family. Um, so I'm an early riser. I get up at four o'clock in the morning and do my run and then I'll come home before everyone's awake and do all my my live lessons, my recordings, um, so that when my kids are up, I can put the parent hat, hat on and teach them. And um, yeah, so those are some of the challenges for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. David, how about you? Uh, you know, initially when we uh, moved to the online learning, the challenge was the access for families at home. Um, at the elementary level, we typically don't ask families to access technology at home. We, we provide devices and, and the internet and opportunities at school. And then, um, you know, the at-home piece is typically uh, paper and pencil and different activities that the kids would have to do. So it, it was definitely different at the elementary level than at the middle school and high school where Hudson School District um, is one-to-one -one devices and those kids had the opportunity to take those devices home. So for the elementary, it was a, a major shift, I think, to, to now have the kids accessing at home. And so, you know, those first couple of weeks, it was a big challenge of making sure the kids actually knew all of their usernames and passwords and the different accounts for all the different tools that we use. Um, and so those first few weeks, it was a lot of troubleshooting with that. And once we got the kids accessing um, after that, then I feel like things started to go a lot smoother. Um, you know, taking on to what Julie had to say with, with so much of what we do is, is relationships with the kids. I, I will say that I think one of the things that helped us was the fact that this was the third trimester when this mm -hmm. came into play. You know, we already had relationships with the kids. The teachers had relationships with the families and parents. And so it, it helped with the transition. If we would have been starting, you know, three weeks into the school year, it would be a, a totally different ball game. And yeah. so it'll be really interesting come fall, um, how things are at that point and, and what new challenges that brings with a whole new group of students for a teacher and trying to build those relationships. Sure. Kim and Matthew, what, what do you think? What, do you, what are the challenges the, you've had? Mr. Moss is correct. Getting connected with the, with the technology 
in the beginning was really challenging um, um, because like you said, we, we don't have that much technology based um, learning. We have a kindergartner and a second grader. Um, so challenges for us, we're just trying to figure out the routine and figure out, okay, the kindergarten has this lesson. The second grader has this lesson. We only have two kids. We have, we have lots of friends who have three kids, four kids in multiple different grades. It requires a large time commitment on the parents' part, just because these kids cannot access can't by themselves. They can't mm-hmm. access drives by themselves. Sure. So yeah. once we got those things ironed out and we could get in and get a routine going, it's actually been quite smooth. Um, the amount of work has been incredibly reasonable. Um, the teachers have done a fantastic job of making sure it's not too much, not too little. Um, some of the other challenges for us are some days it's just a no go. <laughs> well, yeah. And all, all three, all three educators have mentioned the relationship they have with their students. Our relationship here is very different. You know, when you're talking about parent, parent, to, parent to child, teacher to child, um, that relationship. So we're putting, wearing di- different hats, you know, these days. The oh, videos have been really helpful for the, for the kids, uh-huh. for them to be able to see their teacher still teaching a lesson has been the lifesaver through all of this because it's then it's coming from the teacher, not from the parents making me do this. So, um, but we yeah. so far, once we got the kinks worked out in the first couple of weeks, it's actually been uh, really nice to get a routine going. And, and Mr. Moss does our daily rock report. Um, so that has been tremendous to have a little bit of normalcy um, uh-huh. in what's not normal. So. You know, the kids, some other silver linings, they get to sleep in a little. Mm-hmm. They get to have breakfast and snacks when they want. <laughs> As do you, I hope. <laughs> uh, David, what's the rock report? Uh, so the rock report is what we call our, our uh, in-school based news program, our morning news. And so every morning um, we would broadcast a news report with a daily announcement lunch, announce the birthdays. Um, Mr. Schmidt, our principal, would come on the report if he had any special announcements. Uh, when we were in school, it was an opportunity for our fifth grade students to have a, a leadership opportunity where they would write scripts, they'd be the news anchors, they would be the, the technical crew to um, actually facilitate and and I was really just behind the scenes and managing the fifth grade students and making sure that everything went as smoothly as it could and and so when we transitioned to home um, about a week or two into the at-home learning I I realized that this was one piece that I could easily put back into place and give the kids a uh, part of that routine, uh-huh. daily at school routine that would help them. Um, and so I moved in front of the camera and my children and my wife took over the technical piece behind the camera. Um, and I just do a, it's a short little five minute recording every day, um, kind of share whether, um, you know, I ask the kids to email me and submit different jokes that they might have or um, take pictures and let me know of different activities they're doing. And it's a chance for the kids to, to put themselves out there in a way that everybody in the school could see them and the things they're accomplishing. So you get everything from a kindergartner who's excited to lose their first tooth to a fifth grader who learned how to do a backflip on their trampoline to you know you name it and uh-huh. it's it's been enjoyable to to see the kids excited about submitting that stuff to me and and I've gotten a lot of email compliments uh, from parents saying that it's been very helpful for the kids and they enjoy having that part of their school daily routine still in place that sounds good Adam how are um, you know kids are a lot of different types of personalities. Some are more introverted, some are more extroverted. How are you dealing with, with your, you know, your particular students in those situations? You know, it's been interesting. A lot of my extremely introverted kids have really taken the opportunity behind a screen to um, email me several times a day, 
or send me videos over some of the technology we're using and, and getting to know them mm-hmm. on a different level because they're, they're more comfortable at home. Sure. Um, so I'm getting to know some of those kids that are quiet in school, yeah. that, that um, shy away from being the center of attention. And now we were able to have those um, more personal relationship type conversations, um, which has been great. So uh, that's been fun. And then the, the extroverted kids, they, uh, <laughs> they're still extremely, they're extroverted. <laughs> you know, whenever we have our Google meets, they, they're, they're there, they've chimed in They're um, they're being their silly selves and it's, it's, it's great. So. so from what I'm hearing, you do have actual lessons that you record and then give it to the kids. And then do they have an opportunity at that point to interact with you or is, does that come later somehow? So I'm trying to use uh, several different pieces of technology, things that I've used in in class um, for several years. And so, so there's my lessons that I'm teaching and recording and pushing out. And there's not a whole lot of um, interactivity with that, but I'm using uh, a tool called Flipgrid. And we're trying to do one of those every day where I'll pose some sort of question and then kids get a chance to record a video of themselves and then kids can comment or record videos of themselves on other student Mm -hmm. videos. And so this is kind of a daily dialogue that we have based on a simple question. I think today was board game Bonanza. So everyone's chiming in and sharing uh, their favorite board games, teaching us how to, what the rules are. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to see everyone kind of chime in. Julie, are you finding that some kids are reluctant to use this or parents are reluctant to use it? Um, to get involved? Actually, I, I would say I've had just an incredible experience. I have an amazing group of parents, no matter what kind of preparations we do as teachers. And, and it's pretty extensive. I mean, to take what we would do in person in a classroom, and then you have to rework it to make it something more digestible and easier to understand. And it's just a whole different way of teaching. Um, but my parents have been phenomenal. And so if I could do all this work and it wouldn't really mean anything if, if the parents weren't going in and logging on and accessing it. Um, so I've just had really good luck with that. I, I haven't run into anyone who's been reluctant. Um, in fact, I think of my 18 students, I would say almost all of them are working daily. I have feedback from them on about half of them on, on Seesaw. So I'll, you know, do my lessons, I'll record um, some things, and then they'll record themselves responding to a question or a prompt that I have. So what was your favorite part of your math lesson today? Or what is a composite shape? Or, you know, just different mm-hmm. questions like that. And, and they'll record themselves. And, and then I'm able to either record my voice or um, type a comment. And so sometimes I can see when they have misunderstandings and I can, you know, mm-hmm. reteach. And, and so, you know, it's, it's some of the things we've done, we do in the classroom. And, you know, but it's just a different way of doing it. So it's been really interesting. And I feel very fortunate because my, the families that I work with have been super connected and, and very involved and hands-on. So I think it's the silver lining. I mean, every day, mm-hmm. um, every time we do a Google meet, which is, I do about three a week, um, kids sign up for one or two a week. And, um, you know, they're, that they're inviting you. That's, it's kind of like a Zoom meeting. Okay. So, um, and we'd kind of take like, it's sort of like a morning meeting format. So we'll greet each other. We'll um, talk about what's new. So, you know, who's lost a tooth is a big deal in first grade. Almost every, you know, every week somebody's lost a tooth or two. Um, and and then we do a, a game. So they might go on a color scavenger hunt. They bring things back or they we play a uh, guessing games, things like that. Um, so that they're not just connected with me, but they're also connected with each other, which I think is what Adam was kind of referring to when he was talking right. about Flipgrid. How do you, you know, it's one, it's a challenge to keep them connected to you, but also keep them connected to each other because yeah. they're a family. You know, we're a family when we're at school, we spend a lot of time together. Sure. Kim uh, and Matt, what's your take on how your kids are handling this? I think for the most part, they handle it really well. Um, Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned earlier, Sundays are just a Um, Mm no-go. It's a lot of screen time for them. Um, 
we try to give them breaks in between transition points, that kind of thing, even though, you know, there may only be um, a project that's, or a lesson that's supposed to take 20 minutes when it's new to you and you're trying to figure this out on your own and you don't have all the other students around you to learn from and gather things from that can turn into a 45 minute assignment. Um, so we try to give them breaks and for the most part, they have handled it like champs, yeah. <laughs> so to speak. But um, the support really comes from the teachers, um, you know, and everybody, all the teachers have been incredible. They've said, you know, if here's, if you need some extra, here's some extra. If, if this isn't working well, let me know it's not working. Um, but like I said, once we got a routine going, it was, it was much smoother. Yeah. The, the availability of the teachers has been phenomenal. Uh, when we have a problem or a question, it's one email away and I usually get a response very quickly. And the students, you know, as I, as I sit here and talk to my iPad, uh, the screen time, we try to, you know, the screen time is a bit much sometimes. So we try to take breaks a lot through the day and, and, uh, but still kind of try to keep a schedule. Are they missing their friends a lot? Very yes, much so. Very much so. The, the, um, the Google meets have been absolutely lifesavers because it's a break from them looking at us mm -hmm. and it just helps keep a little bit of normalcy. Like, Hey, my friends are still there. You know, they still exist. Um, they're just, you know, I can't go out to the playground with them. Right. Um, the other thing is, uh, Kelly Curtis, our counselor, has been really great about setting up some Google meetings as well with other second graders or kindergartners or whatnot, whatever mm -hmm. grade might need a check-in. So it's not just kiddos from their own classes, kiddos from the entire grade. And that has been really great as well. And incorporating those games like Mrs. Warren was talking about has been absolutely awesome. And, and Mr. Wirt too. Um, it just helps break up the monotony um, and let them know I can still have fun. It's just a different way to have fun. This is for all of you. I, uh, do the kids ask about the virus? Do they ask about what the heck's going on? Uh, on our perspective, our kids do, but um, we both work in fields that are impacted by it. Um, I'm in healthcare. Um, so our kids probably know more about health things than mm -hmm. the average kiddo, just because they ask about mom's day. Um, so yeah, they do ask about it, but in, from their perspective, they just want it to go away. <laughs> they, they're old enough to understand like, okay, I need to keep my distance, but when is this going to end? Cause I just want to go outside and play. <laughs> so. yeah. yeah. I have a four-year-old granddaughter who says, when this, when is this sickness going to be done with <laughs> yeah. the sickness? So, um, how about you guys, the teachers, do you get questions from the kids at all about this? Julie? I have to, I do. I do have a couple of students who talk about it when I when I talk to them, either on the phone or, or and during a Google Meet. We have conversations, so they'll comment about you know. I wish this. I, I wish I could remember that they can't quite say coronavirus. So there's a it, it's a form of that. Um, you know, I wish this virus would, would would just go away. And so one thing that's really helped me because I am in a unique situation of moving up with my students is when we have these conversations, we start to talk about next year. So we can, I can at least say, you know, in the fall, the, all these great, you know, this is what we'll be doing and this is what, where we'll be at. And so that, that helps, I think, um, because none of us really have the answer. And, you know, as adults, we have more information um, at our disposal and we're uncertain and we're, you know, worried. And so I can only imagine how it feels for my kids. I, I, worry about them a lot and, and what they're carrying in their head and their heart. Mm -hmm. David? Um, I can't say on the teacher to student side, I had many questions about it. Um, but as a parent, because I have a, an eight-year-old and a six-year-old myself, um, it's definitely something that has come up and we've talked about because it, we've had to explain to them why all these things are in place, why we're not going to school anymore. And, mm -hmm. um, and I will say that um, our school counselor, Kelly Curtis, uh, when we first uh, started the at-home stuff, she sent out some resources that were amazing for us as a family to be able to read together and watch some videos together that kind of put it into a kid's terms um, mm -hmm. in a perspective that they could understand. Um, because, you know, as an adult, we hear all the 
the large name terminology and, and we read all the articles and watch the videos and we understand it, but to take it and put it in a, a format that makes sense to a kid was something that my wife and I struggled with at first. And so mm -hmm. we're very grateful for Kelly, our school counselor, to, to assist us in that you know, uh, explanation to our kids. Adam, how about you? Yeah, so from uh, the teacher side of things, there there have been several kids, and, and I knew which ones they would be when this all started, um, that ask a lot of questions, um, get a lot of emails. The uncertainty, it's hard for kids. It, it just is. It's um, And like Julie said, we don't have all the answers. So, you know, just kind of bringing it back to acknowledging kids' feelings, saying, yep, those feelings are valid. Um there's nothing wrong with those feelings, but how do we, how do we do something positive with that? Um, and then my own kids, yeah, they're just kind of, they're sick of it. You know, I have a five-year-old who's in preschool and he said, when this coronavirus is done, I'm never washing my hands again. So <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's done and he's never going to wash his hands again. So um, yeah, so good. Yeah. They're just done. They're, they're ready to, um, you know, see their grandparents more. Um, yeah time with their friends, things like that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, we talk about all this support for the kids and reaching out. What about uh, support from your colleagues and even from other parents, fellow parents, you can't see your friends, Matt and Kim, and you guys, um, it's got to be kind of isolating for you as well. It, it is. Um, we kind of have designated times of when one of us, and it's usually just me who goes to the grocery store or I'll pick up things for other families that might need something while they're out. But the way that we've been able to keep the kids connected is, is through Google meetings. So we, you know, set up a two hour meeting and let them kind of be in their own space without, you know, parent mm -hmm. supervision, so to speak, like to try to simulate a normal play session. Um, so that's kind of how we have been working around it. Um, it's gotta yeah. be tough to juggle your own, you're working from home, both of you though, right now. Um, no, well, no, no we you, both fly. you can't really work from home. Can I can't, I can't work from home. <laughs> no, we both fine. leave the home to, to work. So, um, yeah, it just, you fit things in where you can and what gets done gets done and what doesn't doesn't, and it's all going to be okay in the end. It doesn't really matter. So we just make it work. Yeah. How about for the teachers in terms, because I know there's a lot of camaraderie that goes on in a school building, uh, whether it's in the teacher's lounge or crossing in the hallways or whatever. Um, how's that going without, without having that connection? Julie? Well, we, we use some of the same tools that we use with our students. So I still meet, I think, two or three times a week by Zoom with my teammates, um, and we're connected by you know, through text um, messaging. Um, we work together as a first grade team here at RAC. So everything that we've created, we've tried to do more by sharing the, the burden of the work. Um, and I think that's been a really good thing for our students and our families. Um, so that's really helped, but you know, it, it is hard. You, your, your life is really upside down. Today was the first day I was able to, um, we've had a, a two week window to, and we have to sign up there's all these rules around going back into the school building. So I'm actually sitting in my classroom for the first time since March 17th uh, and walking in the room this morning um, and seeing it just like time stood still. The mm -hmm. art is still was still on the walls. It's not anymore. It's in a box and getting ready to be sent to kids. But um, yeah, it's it's a very, very different way of, of, of living. Mm -hmm. I, miss, I miss my teammates. I miss my kids. I miss... My family miss a lot of things, but Adam. Yeah, I mean, same thing Julie said. We we check in with one another, um, text messages, um, Google Meets or Zoom meetings. You know, I have the luxury of my wife teaches at the middle school, so you know, when we we are able to communicate um, with each other for the the, the down moments. Um, when things are frustrating and challenging as well as the positives and, and you know, like we, we understand what it's like. So that's been a really a huge blessing just to <laughs> be able to have a, you know, a colleague, so to speak, in the home with me. Yeah. <laughs> David, how about you? 
Yeah, I'm uh, exactly the same. You know, I think um, our 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 video meetings have been a big help um, with, you know, Mr. Schmidt, our principal hosts um, staff meetings and department meetings on a weekly basis. And so being able to check in there and, and get everybody on the same page and have the same communication um, has been very helpful. Um, a lot of the support that I offer teachers is often through email, but uh, many times through video chats too, if it's easier to talk through things. Um, and, and so it's, we, we are very fortunate at EP Rock. We have a, an amazing staff that has always been supportive of each other. And so we knew that with this new challenge, we would be there for each other and, and, and we would have that, that level of support still there. Um, on the personal side of it, with the um, staying in connection with friends and family, the video chats have been a lifesaver. Um, we definitely chat more often with our family than we used to in the past. Um, with the extended family that lived further away, you know, now we're video chatting multiple times a week, whereas before, if we did it once every couple of weeks, we were lucky. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my daughter is eight years old in, in second grade, and we never even considered social media for her before. Um, but now we've taken the opportunity to do Kids Messenger um, and allow her to chat with her friends to try and keep that uh, relationship there. Because both of my children are very social kids. You know, mm -hmm. I think they go to school for the social aspect and the learning just happens to happen <laughs> while they're there. And so that's, that's been the hardest part for them. Um, you know, we are still getting the academics done, but they're really uh, needing that social piece. And so when we are able to set up some video chats with their friends, like a play date, it's the highlight of their day every single time. You know, we're coming up on the end, the end of the school year. And is there going to be anything that's going to, going to have, um, that the district has planned to help kids over the summer or to transition a little bit from, or are we just going to take summer vacation? You know, those conversations are, are, have been happening for the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, we as teachers this next week are going to go through, um, figure out which students we want to continue connecting with um, throughout the summer. Um, kind of a more personal basis, um, mm -hmm. offering that support to families if they, they, they want it. Um, and then, I mean, there's some unknowns too. I, I think summer school was pushed off um, till at least July. Um, we'll see what happens, but yeah, I, a lot of, a lot of questions, but, but those conversations are happening. So I don't think that it's just going to, it's not just going to end and we're going to have a huge summer. There'll be some level of support that the district will be offering to to families. Yeah, that's good to know. And it's when kind you of think a, back on this experience, this would be for all of you. Um, uh, are there are there some unforeseen benefits that are coming out of this and that you will carry over once things hopefully get back to a new normal at some point that you will continue to take over? Maybe one of the things you've all mentioned is that you're getting used to social media with kids that maybe you hadn't done it with before. But what are the, what are some good things that are going to come out of this? Matt? Well, I hope that the kids, you know, hopefully they remember it and hope they look back on it and see that this was actually, you know, like we could spin it to a positive that we got to spend a lot more time with each other, got to know each other a little bit more. Um, one of the things I had brought up with Kelly Curtis about going forward is that, and I hate to mention the word snow, but next winter is coming. <laughs> it's a fact. Um, when we do have these big snow days, this might we could use this kind of technology during snow days when the kids are home for snow days next winter. I mean, I think this is a really good good point. We're we were all thrown into this, didn't know much about it, and now uh, we're kind of experts. <laughs> you know, pseudo experts. You just ruined snow days, Matt. You just ruined them. Little, <laughs> a possibility. I just ruined snow days. Yes. <laughs> We've spent a lot of time baking and trying new recipes. Yes, it's been um, delicious. Mitch, <laughs> <laughs> our, our son is eight and one of his writing assignments was to tell about your weekend. And he actually wrote in there, I love homemade cinnamon rolls. <laughs> so that was, that was a blessing. But That um, is a blessing. We have been trying new things that we haven't done before and just you know, just trying to connect in ways that, you know, hey, all of the activities are canceled. We're all stuck together. Let's figure this out. We've played more games than we can shake a stick at. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, and it's just been a lot of fun. Not all fun. Most Sundays are fun. <laughs> what are you thinking? Good. <laughs> what are you thinking, Julie? You know, I think, you know, I always felt like I had a really strong relationship and partnership with my parents. Um, but I think this has just taken it to a whole new level. They are so much more in tune to where their child is academically right now. I just think, you know, for a traditional parent teacher conference, the, te the parents come in and meet the teacher kind of, you know, on the teacher's mm -hmm. turf in the classroom. And I feel like I've been going to their home and on their turf, you know, even though it's, you know, sure. virtually. Um, they've invited me into their homes and, and I just feel like moving forward, we just have these stronger connections with families. And I'm hoping my parents will feel truly like an equal partner in this. I've always felt that they were, but I hope that they now feel that way. And I think they do. I think that's one of the, the positives of this whole experience. David, how about you? Um, you know, in my role being a media specialist, it's a lot of, uh, support technology wise for the teachers. And then, you know, my curriculum with what I teach the students is geared towards the technology and how to be a good digital citizen and, and how to navigate these different tools that we have access to. Um, and so I think because it was a, a jump in and go, a lot of those fears that people have with technology have now mm -hmm. been worked through and, and they realize that it's not so bad and, and it's something that they can do. And so I, I think that when we are able to be back, um, you know, some of those teachers that were maybe hesitant to bring technology into their instruction will be much more eager and, and willing to do so. Um, we are like, you know, I always brag about EP Rock, but we, we have an amazing staff that is very tech savvy. Um, and I think that they were able to build on the tools that they had and, and fill their toolbox even more with, with new and great tools. So I think the, the students' tech savviness is going to be um, greatly improved as well as the teachers. Well, and I would think that would be a benefit too going forward because one of the things that happens is, you know, there's all this concern about kids being on the internet or being, or using technology and being, uh, you know, subject to, you know, maybe exploitation or whatever. But it strikes me that the fact that they're using it so um, well in their lives right now from a very young age up, I mean, and, and not just the kids are using it, but their parents are far more familiar with it. You know, when I used to do stories about kids getting in trouble on the internet, it's because their parents just didn't even know what was going on. And now you guys all, you know, parents have to know what's going on, you know, so. Adam, what about you? What do you, what do you think is the, uh, the upside of all this? You know, I'm just, I've, I've been really impressed with my, my students. Um, their creativity has gone up and just their ability to problem solve through mm -hmm. things. You know, they, instead of asking a question that they get some sort of immediate response to, they've had to do a lot of problem solving themselves mm -hmm. and just building that confidence that they can take on challenges. Um, has been has been a huge positive that I think will stick with them for a long, long time. So, and not no not much concern from any of you. It sounds like that they've lost ground in terms of their education this year. Any concerns about that? No, I don't think so. Good, that's good to hear. We get to you know we get to celebrate and you know we see you know I can see the, the kids learning at home and we get to celebrate with them when they have the aha moment. You know mm -hmm. I've, I've let my son work on a math problem that I knew might have, I, I probably should have given him a little instruction, but I just let him work on it based on what he's lear already learned through the year, building up to this problem. And he got it and we got to celebrate with him. You know, <laughs> he, he, he nailed it. And I was, I was blown away, you know, and <laughs> see, that, see that learning, you know, uh, yeah. That's first, unique. Yeah. And it's, it's really cool. It's really fulfilling. That's wonderful. Well, that seems like a very positive note to end on. Does anybody else have anything they want to add before we close? Well, thank I thank you. you all very much. This has given thank a very you. nice positive spin to all of this. And for though, for us grandparent types, it's good to know that you could, I, I can't imagine doing it myself. I would, I would hide under the kitchen table when it came time for chemistry. So I'm <laughs> delighted to know there are people like you guys out there. So thank you very much. And I wish you all the best and a long, hot summer, hopefully. That would be good.
Thanks again, everybody, for participating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.